behavior change. Let's first start with the split middle method. This is a tool <clears throat> used to estimate trends both within and across conditions. Why doesn't every home in the U.S. have solar panels? The number one reason is not about sunlight, the weather, outlined in your text. This method requires a minimum. This method requires a. trends um, in your data when your data are variable. So if you have variable data, you want to make sure that you have a lot more data points to try to gain stability. But sometimes that's not always possible. <clears throat> now we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about how you can analyze the overall magnitude of behavior change when implementing an intervention. Effect sizes are used for this purpose. We often use single case research design because we are focused on we want to know before we implement an intervention if it leads to a big change. We often ask these questions when the cost of implementing an intervention may outweigh the benefit. For example, 
If you have a child who is engaging in high rates of eye poking in a special education classroom without an aid, and you want to consider implementing a blocking intervention, you might want to know how much of a reduction in eye poking um, have other people gotten with a blocking procedure before trying to get the child an aid to implement the intervention. This may be critical if the reductions that have been um, if the reductions have been small or insignificant. Knowing this information ahead of time may also help you find a stronger, more effective intervention faster instead of using resources to implement an intervention that leads to very little change. When looking at effect sizes, we are combining the results of several single case research um, designs in what is called a meta-analysis to get a more accurate estimate of the average treatment effect meta-analysis that leads to the reductions have been small or insignificant. Knowing this information ahead of time may also help you find a stronger, more effective intervention faster instead of using resources to implement an intervention that leads to very little change. When looking at effect sizes, we are combining the results of several single case research. Um, designs in what is called a meta-analysis <laughs> to get a more accurate estimate of the average treatment. Understanding of why the treatment effect varied in different studies. To do this, we need to standardize the measurement systems in each of the studies so that we can compare them. For example, a study might look at frequency of eye poking. visual analysis using the split middle method and the importance of effect sizes as it relates to magnitude of change.
So let's say you have to read an incredibly long email from your boss that you have to finish before the big meeting. But it's the one that dictates how you measure effectiveness, right? So that's a problem. Um, another uh, another issue is that all large effects look the same. So let's say that you have uh, the baseline looking like this, right? Every every data point in the um, in the intervention phase is above that outlying value, right? So you see that it would be a hundred percent effect. Um, now, what happens if you have the data looking like this, right? Clearly, that's more effective. But you know, they're still all above that highest point, so it's still you're kind of hitting the ceiling effect, where no matter how much improvement there is. Once you're at 100%, you, you, you don't have any sensitivity to, uh, to detect anything above that. Now, this is a criticism of all of the effects that I'm going to show you. And this is where those parametric tests that come in the appendix at the end of the presentation are going to come into play. Um, they allow you to um, uh, estimate the magnitude of that, uh, of that large effect. Um, and, and that's why I want to look at those at the end, but at the same time, they have their own shortcomings. And in reality, you know, if, if you ever have an intervention that's, that's this massively effective, you know, you deserve a medal, right? Um, so it's not really that big of an issue because most of the time you're not going to have such a huge effect, right? But you should be aware that um, all of the quantifications have this technical shortcoming, all right? Um, now, Moving on from there, there's another issue. Um, the, uh, the issue being, again, related to that um, idea of the, uh, the baseline. So looking at this, you know, I kind of, I just kind of cheated and scrunched up these data uh, to show what might be um, happening. So let's say that this is your highest point, and this is a more realistic example, right, where you might have a little bit of improvement the data points above that maximum point and the rest are below. So this is just an illustration of that previous point where if you have uh, that maximum outlier as your criterion, that is a big outlier and all the progress that's made is ignored because you can clearly see that if we use this point, the second highest point, gosh, that was like a huge improvement, right? So. Um, that's the really uh, big problem with percent of non-overlapping data. And so one issue that was uh, identified is, is this. So one of, the, um, uh, one of the ways to summarize all this is, is kind of here on this slide.